Kam Ganapati Namaha Om Kam Ganapati Namaha Om Kam Ganapati Namaha Om Brahma Mira Stripparan Takare Banu Shashi Bumisito Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra Shani Rahu Keteva Sarve Graha Shanti Kara Bhavantu Om Hrim Gurayanama Om Hrim Gurave Namaha Om Hrim Shukraya Namaha Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsa Well, greetings and welcome to the Cosmic Kev 100, your weekly astro video zine. This is for the week beginning with the weekend starting Friday the third the 14th rather of July 2023 and going through Thursday the 20th of 2023 so this is really the last full week of cancer and this week most of it's going to be Vedic cancer as well now by the 16th so by Sunday, at some point, the, the sun will be in sidereal cancer. It's been, it's still in Gemini as of today, in, in the sidereal zodiac. Um, but it's in cancer in the tropical zodiac, which is what most of this uh, astrology forecast is. But I like to teach a little bit of Jyotish, a little bit of the Vedic way of looking at things to, as well. Now, if you like this program, please subscribe. Please give it a like. Uh, love for you to follow me uh, you can message me I also do personal readings for people I'm extremely reasonable compared to a lot of astrologers out there and I do most of my personal readings are are oriented towards Jyotish or oriented towards the Vedic sidereal zodiac which is how we see the, the planets in the sky mostly all right so Thank you for that, and and thank you for your comments. I, I just appreciate hearing from you. It was good to hear from Shant again, but my my record, my regulars, Rebecca, Gabrielle, um, so many other good people out there that you you count, and I do these every couple of weeks, and so. Let's look at what we've got going on right now. So right now, if we looked at the moon, we would see this shrinking, waning moon in the constellation of Taurus about to go into the constellation of Gemini. And the lunar mansion that's like half Taurus, half Gemini is known as Mrigashira. Now there's a, there's a couple of interesting stories about Mrigashira. One's about you know Brahma creating a daughter that he lusted after so much that the daughter freaked out and um, she turned herself into a doe and ran away and so Brahma turned himself into a stag to pursue his daughter and Shiva said we're not having cosmic incest today cut the deer's head off so deer's head is actually what Mrigashira means now Mrigashira Nakshatra half Taurus half Gemini Taurus is Venus Gemini's Mercury. They're both Rajasic planets, Rajas. That means they inspire passion. Venus inspires passion about love and about creativity. Mercury inspires passion about money, technology, and material gain, as well as information and being learned, knowing things. So, you know, Mirgashira is curiosity. So there's and Mars is being able to take risks. So Mars rules this nakshatra. Now the other Mars ruled nakshatras are Shitra and Dainista. And all three of these nakshatras in Vedic astrology are half Earth, half air signs. So when I say that the moon is in Taurus, I'm not saying it in the tropical astrology sense, because in the tropical astrology sense it's in Gemini today. Uh, but you're not going to see it in that part of the sky. Now moon, like I said, it's shrinking, so we're kind of finishing things off. And we could look at this weekend as the moon of curiosity. And so we're going into this 
weekend with a curious nature. Um, when we get into Saturday, Sunday, the moon will mostly be in the Ardra Nakshatra, so we'll face our own emotional limitations as we go through through the week in that sense. And in Western astrology or tropical astrology, it's the Gemini moon, and, and Gemini moon's about dualism. We look at things in two different ways here. Uh, one of the beautiful things about this Mergashira nakshatra in the Vedic study is that is about the story of the birth of Buddha as a graha, a planet, a um, and it's the ultimate student. And he, it was said that the moon had kidnapped Tara, the wife of Jupiter, the wife of Lord Grisapati and took her away and a son was born and the son was Buddha and Buddha saw that the moon his father allegedly we don't know for sure there's different versions of the story had all these other wives and just seemed to be fickle minded and not paying a lot of attention necessarily to his mother and so when he grew up he said mom your other your husband you had before the moon wasn't that um, Lord Grisapati, the great teacher of spiritual truth and ultimate wisdom? And she's like, yes, my son, but because I was taken away from the moon, I'm considered contaminated, so he's not going to have anything to do with me. He says, well, that's wrong. And anyhow, to make a long story short, Buddha appeals to Lord Grisapati and appeal, appeals to Lord Brahma to restore his mother. And Lord Brahma comes to Lord Grisapati in a dream and says, look, um, she was actually pregnant with your kid before the moon took her away. But he's like, no, I can't do that. That's wrong. So young Lord Buddha comes to Lord Grisapati and says, hey, it's not my mom's fault that this happened. She was taken against her will, and you need to accept her as pure and take her back. And so in this example, we see Mercury, or Buddha, as an advocate for women. And, and Lord Grisapati does take Buddha and adopts him as his son. And, you know, and so the best student is Buddha because of his wisdom in explaining to Grisapati, he couldn't resist and took back his, uh, his son. And some say that he is actually the son of the moon because both the moon and Mercury rule the mind. So this is uh, called Rahasia's Secret. The story's a little bit lengthy, and there's different versions of it. So anyhow, you know, Moon and Gemini, curiosity this weekend, Moon's going to be in Cancer, but it is, uh, it's a waning Moon, you know, it's decreasing, which means that it's a fertile Moon on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday will be the new moon, and that new moon is going to be in a lunar mansion known as Punavarsu. So Punavarsu is ruled by Aditi. She's a goddess of affin affinity, and Punavarsu is a Jupiter-ruled nakshatra, along with Vishaka and Purvabhadra. Jupiter-ruled nakshatras teach us about spirituality. Aditi is a goddess of infinity. She says there's so many different opportunities to do things. She's also like an archer. Boom. There's a bow is one symbol. Or the quiver and the arrows are kept. This nakshatra implies a nice home, but wanting to go on vacations and explore other areas or reach goals. That we can reach goals, the arrow being a target that we'll reach. So on uh, Monday, at 11, well, it should be Monday at 11.32 a.m., we're going to have a new moon, and it's in Cancer in both systems. So this is good for emotional renewal, because Punavarsu, all the Jupiter-ruled nakshatras are three-quarters air, one-quarter water. So this is the water, this is the fourth pada, this is the fourth part of that nakshatra moon that we're getting into and, and so if you're needing emotional renewal and you're trying to liberate yourself from past stuff this is going to be where you reach that goal all right sign by sign we're going to do this folks um, we're starting with you aries so greetings aries welcome to your horoscope so if you've been a couch potato aries this is your time now with mars in the sixth house in virgo to get off your rump and start working out. And so 
I highly recommend yoga, breathing, Wim Hof breath, getting your diet together too. You know, it's like Mars's purpose is to get rid of evil. And what's going on in your sixth house, your digestive system, the colon, the, the lower intestines and stuff. We want that to be healthy. And we get it healthy with fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, summer is abundant fruit. And it, it overall, it makes you feel good. I mean, unless you have serious blood sugar problems, you may not be able to go that route as well. But if you don't, um, it's just so healthy. There's so, it's so good for your digestion and your skin and all parts of, of your being. And the, the thing is, is that eating fruit is karma free because you're not destroying a plant. And there's a, there's a seed. So it's a very peaceful, there are people that are fruitarian. I mean, it's questionable whether that's really a healthy diet for most people. Um, but anyhow, Aries, um, you know, you're about getting rid of evil, standing for the truth, being an individual, and you know how you're the, the sign that really embraces self-love. And, and so with the sun in Cancer, the fourth house, embracing your ancestors, embracing your parents, it's part of self-love. It's like even if you don't like them, it's because of that experience they had together that you're here. And so there's a beauty in that to uh, relish in. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. So for Taurus, we look at Venus. You know, Venus is in Leo. Actually, Venus is in Leo in both systems, both Vedic and... And so Venus in the fourth house for Taurus. It's about home. It's about family. Once again, there's this theme about family, about our mothers, about our ancestors, and making the house nice. It's also about your tribe, the people you feel comfortable with. And it's about your history, where you've been and where you're going. So this is something I would focus on this week, especially with this new moon coming up. I mean, for you, this new moon is in the third house. Third house is our siblings. Healing a relationship with siblings. You know, I got to do that actually last Taurus season um, in May, and um, it was beautiful that I am so fortunate to have three loving brothers, and we want the best for each other. And when families pull together as a team, it's an incredible power. I see today there's so much separation in our world, and when we can heal it among each other at the home, then we can move out into the community and spread that in a good way. And it does take effort, and it, it may not always happen. And, you know, I understand some families are toxic and you can't do this and stuff, but I would say at least work on your inner life and have an inner perception of beauty, love, or at worst, neutrality. Greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So cancer time symbolizes the second house. Second house is where we make money. Second house is where we find a voice. Second house is working on our neck and our mouth and even sometimes our, our vision, our face. Second house is also about the family situation we were growing up, especially through grade school, kindergarten through eighth grade. And, and so we get this perception of ourself and who we are in that age range and it's not always good for anybody uh, everybody you know I am um, I personally have Rahu in the second house and so growing up I felt like a stranger and like a little bit weird and offbeat all my life uh, and I grew up grew up with the emergence of the counterculture I was, I was a toddler we had a baby and it was beatniks and when I got into my um, my tweens, the, the hippie movement was already kind of in full gear. And when I was in my late teens, the punk rock movement came on and disco and all this other stuff. And it was just like, what an interesting time to grow up. And hip hop emerged in my a little bit stronger in my early 20s. And, and so there was all these and break dancing and all these amazing cultural events um, 
have colored my existence. And, and so what I'd say for you is, you know, enjoy yourself, enjoy the culture around you, and just try to heal the wounds of childhood, whatever way you can. And realize that, you know, creator doesn't make junk. You've got a voice now with Mercury in the third house. Your communication is better than ever. And you're speaking from the heart. Now, greetings Cancer, welcome to your horoscope. And happy birthday if you're a Cancer having a birthday this week. I just want to give you props and um, just say how much I appreciate you, that you're important to me. So, uh, love, love. And that goes to Rebecca. Rebecca's birthday is on the 15th. So, Rebecca, I just wanted to give you a good birthday shout. You're one of my faithful viewers. Um, I've got some other other people that that are viewing me as well, having birthdays this week. And whoever you are, you count. And thank you for tuning in. So, Cancer, it's you know here's a moon in your first house, albeit you know towards the end. This is renewing on how we do things in every way. The first house, in a lot of ways, is not only a lucky house, but it's also a house that we're conscious of the energy of the planets in it. So, this weekend, Moon goes into Cancer, you're going to be feeling that. You know, you're going to be feeling at what you need to let go of this weekend. And what do you want to begin? What do you want to make your goal? I think also material goals, manifestation is really powerful for Cancer with this new Moon on Monday. Come on. New moon on Monday. Moon day. This is a powerful new moon. And, and new moons, folks, to be honest with you, they're really more powerful than full moons because new moons are where we plant the seeds of intention. So this is where you're going to manifest. And um, you're the flavor of the month. All right. Greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Venus in the first house, how lovable you are. You know, Venus is slowing down here, too. And Venus is about to go retrograde next week. So, loves from the past might suddenly appear. Now, Venus in Leo, from what I've observed, likes a lot of attention. It's sort of an intention-getting um, placement for Venus. You know, the sun... And Venus often kind of collide with each other. You can't see Venus because Venus goes Kazemi, goes behind the sun. Outside of Mercury, Venus combusts sun is probably one of the most common things. And so sometimes people will say that you can't always see Venus's beauty. What I like to think of as an astrologer more like is that these people are really actually creative in their soul. They're creative souls. And part of their soul purpose, sun purpose, is to be creative because you know, Venus and the Sun are kind of loving each other, warming each other up, purifying each other, cooking each other, you know, and, and um, cooling or cooking both. You know, the Sun's a big graha, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of cook there. And, uh, but I, I see it as a, as a way of like, okay, how am I, how is my soul and my creativity coming together this week. How am I am I putting that together? Are people seeing it? Mercury in the first house. You got a lot to say. There's a lot on your mind. So here you got the two Raja planets. These are two planets about passion, Venus and Mercury. Yeah. Shukra and Buddha. <laughs> and they're right there in your first house. And so it's like, hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling really passionate. But Sun's still in the 12th house, which is a house of loss. And there's kind of like a blind spot. We don't always see everything in the 12th house. The things we see in the 12th house manifest themselves in dreams. If we go to an ashram or a retreat or kind of backpacking out in the wilderness, that is the best 12th house experience you could have. And I, I think with this new moon being ru ruled by um, Punarvasu, and it kind of indicates vacations, and nice homes. Uh, I see you going somewhere. Mm. All right. Greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, Virgo, you're kind of fired up right now because we've got Mars in the first house. All right. So, I mean, the sun's in the 11th, so this has been kind of a social time for you. 
Oven C is a Virgo rising like Cancer times the best time to have a party, best time to connect with friends. I, I love it so much and I am so blessed by so many good people in my life. I can't even um, begin to like name all the names because there's there's so much love in my life. And I'm, I live in Chico, California, which if any of you have lived here or been here and spent any amount of time, for the most part, hopefully you got that good side of Chico. It's an incredible community where people are like tribe and family to each other. And most of us want to move each other forward. I mean, the politics, because that's ruled by money, that's not really so pleasant right now. I mean, we've got at least one very decent human being on that political spectrum, but he's he's young and he's shunned by some very greedy, privileged elders that are part of our political situation. So uh, giving a shout out to Addison, you know, thank you, Addison, um, who actually happens to be a Virgo. So I mean, with this Mars here though in your first house, you're able to go, hey, it's time to get rid of evil. It's time to take action and make things better. And it's also, there's this independence. You know, you, you look, a lot of things involve your work. A lot of things involve your career life. Tenth house is the ground zero for the workplace. So moon's there today. And so think to yourself, this is where my talents and skills get used for the benefit of all, all in my society. Where do I want to put those today? And with this new moon, it's about who are the friends I love and appreciate? And how are they going to help me when I need to kind of lay low over the next, you know, five weeks after this, you know, eventually I'm going to go into a little bit of retreat mode until Virgo season arises and I can really shine like the sun, which sidereally most Virgos are. <laughs> so keep that in mind as you're going through this week. It's like make plans, make steps, but, you know, you might want to start laying low, especially with this new moon. Hmm. Okay. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. I mean, cancer time is about your career. Cancer time is about where your talents and skills shine in front of other people. Today, the moon is in your ninth house. Great moon for initiating travel. Um, over the weekend, a lot of your talents and skills are going to be seen. This new moon that's going to leak over into your social life eventually too. So there's this other part of you that is going to, you know, benefit. But career moves, you got a new opportunity that you need to go for. This could be it. You know, you might get a job and they might give you four weeks or, or more before you have to accept it. So you'll be able to give your two weeks notice and then have an extended amount of time where you can just really enjoy yourself. Um, that's one scenario. Uh, Venus, let's look at Venus. Venus is in the 11th house, so that's socializing. It's about to go in the 12th house, so you know it could be like a personal love, and, and also it's like Venus is about to go retrograde too, um, and so loves from the past could show up, and you know just kind of un wacky, unconventional ways of expressing love can come out, and you'll see this in your social circle as we go through these these coming weeks and and you know your social life is still I'd say this weekend you know you're, you're gonna see some of that but you're gonna see more of that after the new moon that you know your social life will be a bigger part of the picture okay well greeting Scorpio and welcome to your horoscope so cancer time is a good time for you to take a vacation it's a good time for you to travel it's ninth house Moons in Gemini. Um, for today, that's transformation, and you know, a lot of times, you know, it's a Distana house. It's not an easy house. It's like other people in power kind of thing. <clears throat> they have the control. Just relax, breathe with that. That's okay. Actually, when the moon's going through the eighth house or planets in the eighth house, you let other people do things for you. They help you. That is pretty nice, and I think those of us who are kind of I mean, I know the male ego, oftentimes we don't like other people to do things for us because we want to seem capable and heroic, but it's really good when you allow other people to invest in you. It actually makes them appreciate you more. And this is something I've learned. I've learned this from, from other women teaching me this. It's like, you know, allow yourself to be vulnerable enough 
that other people can pour their love on you and you get an investment. Now, sun's going to move by, you know, not this weekend, but the next weekend is going to be in your 10th house. So you're getting ready to show some career stuff. Venus in your career house. So whatever you do creatively, get active, be conscious, do that creative stuff. It's going to be so beautiful and it's going to be so rewarding. So we want to welcome your creative abilities, Scorpio, at this time. I mean, your key phrase is, I create. So that's, um, that's an important part of the mix. Of course, Mars in the 11th house, it's a good time for you to socialize, meet other people. And um, this new moon could, you know, inspire more travel and just a higher wisdom you know just allowing that higher wisdom to shine through okay greeting Sagittarius welcome to your horoscope so you know this Jupiter <clears throat> and um, north node Uranus things been going on for a while six house it's about getting yourself in shape physically it's about helping other people it's about serving others and it's also about making up, creating good karma that will eliminate bad karma. It's like they say the sixth house helps us with any hidden twelfth house karma that's not good. So we make good karma by serving other people, helping other people. Sometimes we deal with small pets and, and sometimes we deal with uncles and aunts and sometimes we're dealing with government work. But it's generally teamwork, working with other people. And then there's like people at work that aren't always pleasant. Sometimes they pop up in the sixth house. Um, but you know, there's sons in Cancer. Cancer's eighth house, another Destana house. Unlike what I said before, Scorpio, letting other people help you with this new moon, allowing other people to help you. And you know, the sun will eventually, a week from this coming Saturday, you know, when we get over to. Uh, the 22nd, so it'll go into Leo at some point in the day, and then at, at the end of the day, and then at that point, all this kind of good, good fortune, good feeling will start flooding your existence. Hmm. Greetings Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. So here you are, Saturn ruled, Saturn's in Pisces. Pisces is in the third house from you, that is siblings. That is your neighbors, that is information, that's writing, that's working with your hands. And it's also like keeping a journal, like they say the most successful people often will ha write things down. Like when they get up, this is what I want to do. And some people do it before they go to bed. What I'd say is in the morning it's good to write things down. These are my goals for today. When you go to bed, this is what I'm grateful for. You know, that, you know so having a gratitude journal and having a goal journal could be a real plus in navigating what's about to come up. So Cancer is, you know, a partnership sign for you. So there's an element of romance, there's this element of wanting to get close to people. Now Venus is in the eighth house and that's really deep and it's about to go retrograde. So that could be things going on with your spouse, especially you guys that are in a committed relationship to a woman. You'd be watching them and what they're going through and, you know, the chances are they're going to be really vulnerable and there's, you know, things could could change a lot and, and so I'm just like going, okay, home money pay me home, <laughs> you know, yeah. let's uh, keep everything on a peaceful thing with all the relationships and, um, you know, there's support though. There's also support from siblings, neighbors, you might have mutual friends, um, onward it goes. Well, as we welcome Aquarius into this horoscope. so. You know, we, Cancer represents your sixth house, so there's hard work right there, you know, you're working. Um, today, Friday, Moon's in the fifth house, it's love, 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 uh, open our heart, help our kids, all these things. But this last week of Cancer, getting that good karma that gets rid of bad karma, volunteer work, service work, donations to the poor, uh, these things are going to help you. Um, Keeping a good prayer practice, good mantra practice, good visualization practice. And um, I can't emphasize enough giving your time or giving your money to help others less fortunate. That's going to help 
in this period of time. And then the next thing is, you know, there's Venus is in the seventh house, so there's this kind of interesting love that's going to be kind of twisting and turning in Aquarius's life right now. And I mean, on the, on on the flip side, you know, Aquarius has this reputation for being detached, not caring, being kind of up in their head. I don't know, liking eccentric things. So it's it's not always easy to negotiate in a relationship with an Aquarian. You know, I'm just gonna put that out there, and that's not to say um, anything negative about about them. But I, you know, from what I know, in the Vedic sidereal zodiac as well as the tropical horoscope, this part of the sky, it's a little bit interesting, you know. And so, a lot of compassion, a lot of understanding. Don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't you know, throw in the towel or anything. I, I'd say you won't know for sure about a relationship till November, what's going on. Um, greetings Pisces, welcome to your horoscope. There's definitely, you know, this energy with Neptune and Saturn, you know, they're, they're both really wise planets. Saturn wants you to work hard, number one. And I mean, a lot of times Pisces is like, I don't want the pain, <laughs> you know, so I'm not gonna work hard. Um, Mars in the seventh house. One of my teachers, Sanjay Roth, says, Mars in the seventh house can make you a sweeter, more diplomatic personality. So there's this transit. It's like, can I make peace with my enemies? It's also like people openly confronting you. And so if anyone openly confronts you, don't be defensive. Best thing to respond with is like, I'm so glad you shared that with me, or I can see how you might feel that way. You know, you don't have to like, that's that way you neutralize hostility that you might get from being defensive. Oh no, you're not. You're like this, a counterattack. That's kind of like a lot of us are trained to be like that. We just don't want to be because it's not really putting ourselves in a better position. You know, it actually seems to. It's like putting gasoline on a fire. You really don't want to do that. You know, I mean, unless you're some. <laughs> powerful figure trying to lead the earth into some other <laughs> agenda. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> um, you know, those of you into conspiracy theories, kind of, you know, i.e. what happened in Canada and stuff, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know. I'll, I'll just say that. I'm not sure, but, I'm, I, but what I am sure of is I want to listen to everybody. I want everyone to be included. You know, and I think Pisces, you're really good at that. And this new moon in, in Cancer, it's like, wow, this is such a great opportunity to express your creativity, to express your love, to renew your relationship with your children, and to bring more good fortune in your life overall. And it's been a joy and an honor and a privilege of being with you today. I look forward to being with you next week when we do this again. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification number. I love your comments. Keep on participating. You're the people that we've all been waiting for. Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Namaste.